It's Amelia, welcome back to my channel. Okay, I don't know if you know, but Taylor Swift released a surprise album this past week called Folklore and it is literally incredible. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it. I will wait. She also released a music video for a single, Cardigan, and the video was literally so magical and beautiful and amazing and uh, it was just incredible. I never thought that we'd get another Taylor Swift album in this kind of style and this soon and I'm just so excited. I got on her website as soon as I got the email about the release and I looked at some of the new merch that she has and she had some really cute sweatshirts and she has a cardigan that matches the cardigan from the music video about the song called Cardigan. It's white, it has black stripes around the arms and the base, it has black buttons, it has little silver stars on the elbows which is just really cute. It's a very unique piece and she's selling it on her website for $49 and I put it in the cart and I was going to buy it and then I thought to myself, $49? I think we can DIY a version that is way cheaper. So I went to my local Goodwill and I picked up this cardigan and it's just a basic white cardigan. It has cute cabling down the sleeves. It was originally $4.60, but if you know, Goodwill has different days where the colors of the tags are priced differently and the day I went was when greens were half off. So I got this cardigan for $2.30, which is an incredible deal. I'm using supplies that I already have, but all you're gonna need for this DIY is a white cardigan, black yarn, a yarn needle, black acrylic paint if the buttons on your cardigan are not already black, and a paintbrush to go with that. You need some Mod Podge to go over the painted buttons. You're gonna need felt for the stars on the elbows and some kind of embroidery floss to sew those on with. Whatever color you like, I think I'm gonna go with a color to match my felt. Okay, so now that we know what we need, we're gonna go ahead and make Taylor Swift's cardigan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take all the buttons off and I'm going to paint them black. So I just grabbed a paper plate and I'm just gonna lay all the buttons down, paint them quickly on one side, let them dry, flip them over, paint the other side, give them two coats, and then I'm gonna go ahead and Mod Podge them when I'm done just to seal in the paint so it doesn't get chipped. Here is the original cardigan. I got really lucky at Goodwill finding a cardigan that was so similar to Taylor's. Obviously mine is a lot longer, hers is more of a waist length cardigan, and I thought about cropping it, but I decided ultimately that I liked the length. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to snip off all of the buttons very carefully so that I'm not cutting through the yarn of the cardigan. We're gonna paint the first layer, set this to the side to dry, and then we're going to start on the black trim around the cardigan. So I'm purposely leaving in all the extra thread when I cut it off so that I'll know where to re-sew the buttons when I'm done. I can pull those off whenever we're done re-sewing the buttons when they've been painted, but I'm leaving these in just to make sure that I don't lose the spot. step is going to be working on the black trim around the sleeves. So there's two stripes around the sleeves and then the base of the sweater and then one stripe that runs up the buttons and then around the neck. So I thought we would start on the sleeves first. So on Taylor's cardigan there's a stripe here and a stripe here and obviously hers the black has been woven into the cardigan it's not on top. So depending on what the weave of your cardigan looks like you're going to have to do this differently you're gonna have to adapt it to the cardigan you have but I'm going to show you exactly how I'm stitching on the black trim so that you have an idea. I started out trying to match it to 
the stitches on the cardigan but because my stitches are so small it really just did not look good and the cardigan that Taylor is selling has a thick black trim around so this is what we're doing and I think it looks really good you're gonna come up in between two of the rows of raised stitches and I tried to come up right in the center and then I went down about four stitches and I'm gonna go through the center of the stitch and I'm gonna come up in between the next two raised ones and I'm leaving it nice and loose. I'm not pulling it too tight. And then you're gonna turn right back around and go back through the center of the stitch and then up through the middle again to create that second part of the V. And there you go. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around and the inside's gonna look like this. So it's nice and neat. And when we're done with the row on this cuff, I'm going to measure down exactly how far I want the second row and just repeat this process around the second row. And then we can move on to the border around the button area and the collar. I finished the first row and I think it actually looks really cute. I'm really excited how it turned out. So I'm about to start the second row of stitching and I just looked back at my reference picture and it looks like there is about this much space in between the rows of black and the portion of white at the base is bigger than the portion in the middle. They're not centered. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it, you know? This looks good, so we're just gonna go for it. If we have to tear it out, we have to tear it out. You gotta be adaptable, you know? <laughs> we finished the first sleeve let's go back to the buttons and paint the other side so that while we do the second sleeve the other sides can dry I just finished both of the sleeves and it looks so cute it's kind of giving me Charlie Brown vibes for some reason <laughs> but it's adorable so Next step is to do this exact same thing to the trim around the bottom. The two stripes, I'm using this original one that I did as a guide of the space in between them. So we're just gonna go ahead and do those. And I think I'm gonna add another coat of paint to the buttons on both sides, making sure that they are completely coated. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge over top of the buttons just to make sure the paint doesn't chip and to make them shiny and new looking. just finished the trim and it looks so cute and now I'm also going to go ahead and sew the buttons back on to start on the black trim that goes up along the buttons and it's on both sides. I also probably should have waited to sew on the buttons until after I had done the stitching, but you know, we're all learning here, so <laughs> we're gonna work with what we have. I am really loving how it looks. I think it looks really good. Finish this part so that we can move on to the stars. I'm about to work on the trim around the collar. I'm looking at the way that my cardigan is constructed and there are six rows of raised stitches. So I think I'm gonna work primarily on the inner four to leave the outer two as a trim, and I'm just gonna do my zigzag pattern back and forth. Also on Taylor's cardigan, it doesn't just go straight across and then down. It does a nice curve, so I'm gonna try to follow that. out to be a lot trickier than I anticipated. I basically just stitched on either side keeping the shape of the little zigzag V's that I was doing but it did end up making the other side look a little bit messy which I didn't like. If I was doing it again I think maybe I would have come up with a different way to do this. I'm not really sure what that way would be but I would just say experiment with your cardigan and maybe if you want to leave off this trim I think that it looked really cute without the trim going up and down just around the collar, the sleeves, and the base and so that is totally an option. Here you can see how I maneuvered around the buttons and I show you the other side and how it got a little bit messy. 
We are at the final step of making Taylor's cardigan. All we have left to do is add the cute little stars that go on the elbows. So Taylor's stars are silver and then they're stitched on by a sewing machine around the edge with silver thread and that looks super cute. But I don't have any silver felt and I also think that because my cardigan has more of a homemade vibe, I'm not sure if silver would go with it anyway. I think something more like this would look cute. So these are the options that I have. I think I'm going to go ahead and use black just to keep it all looking concise and put together so that the black will match the yarn and the buttons. And I think that's gonna look really cute. So Taylor's original sweater has three stars on each sleeve, two bigger and then one smaller. So I'm only gonna need to make two template sizes for the stars. So I could just freehand these, but actually freehanding stars is pretty difficult. I've tried it before and they always turn out looking really horrible. So I suggest making a template and using that as a base. After you get your star templates all cut out, you just need to pin it to your felt and you're going to need to make four of the larger stars and two of the smaller ones. To make sure you're pinning your stars in the right place on the sleeves, I looked at Taylor's for reference, then tried on my cardigan and stuck a pin in the sleeve exactly where I wanted the stars to go. About to do the last step, I pinned all of the stars to the sleeves and now we are about to sew them on, just the whip stitch. So when you're sewing something on a sleeve, you just want to be really careful not to sew the sleeve together. So I'm just going to put my hand inside to make sure that I'm not sewing through both layers. is finally done and I am so excited. It turned out way cuter than I could have even imagined. The stars on the elbows are so, so cute. So here's the final look. Final thoughts, I absolutely love how this cardigan turned out and it was really fun to make it. And there's just a sense of accomplishment when you wear something that you've made or you've altered and you can just kind of show it off and people will say, wow, that's such a cool piece, where'd you get it? And you'll be like, I made it. And that's always really fun. Obviously, I still want to buy the cardigan that Taylor is selling, but if you didn't have $49 to spend and you really, really wanted the cardigan, I think that we proved that it's totally DIYable and it only took me two days to do all the stitching around the trim, which might seem like a long time, but if you're already gonna be watching TV anyway, you might as well give your hands something to do. I had so much fun DIYing Taylor's cardigan. I really hope this inspires you to be crafty and maybe alter a piece of clothing that you have or go check out your local Goodwill and see if you can find something that you can make into something even better. I post crafting, DIY, and upcycling videos every Wednesday, so if you want to join me, please hit subscribe, and next week I'll be back at you with another video. See you guys later. Bye!